Hello, welcome to episode 18 of the Harry Potter painting series. Uh, this one, as you can see, is all about the Death Eaters, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so for the Death Eaters, I'm going to be using a like a dark green colour for the robes. Just so you, you know, I'm thinking they're all X Slytherin, so I want a bit of green in there. So I'm going to use in my old um, colour black without actually using black. So it's a really dark green, uh, a grey green, and then a light grey with a little touch of green in it. So we'll see how that goes. So on with the first coat of the Despair Green. As I say, I've used this um, quite a bit before with um, superhero stuff, Marvel. I quite like the uh, the effect. This um, scale 75 paint is going to take a couple of coats till we get an opaque layer. Uh, if you notice I'm using the wet edge, which means you add paint to the wet edge. If, if I started painting that down there, then I went back to this bit, chances are you'll get a little tide mark on that bit. But with the wet edge, you don't get any tide marks. So. so I'm going to do another coat. Uh, once it's dry, we'll crack on. Okay, so that's um, there's about three, possibly four coats. I've lost count because I'm doing all four of them at the same time. Um, and I still wanted it darker in the you know in the deep recesses of the folds of the cloak. So I've added a little bit of black to the despair green, and I've done one coat already, which you can hopefully see. Um, and I'm just going in with another coat now. Just to the, you know, the deepest folds. I'm just going to put it right in the middle of the fold. And if you make a mistake, if you keep some of the despair green on your on your palette, you can just feather it out. Then see if if I go a bit too far there. First thing I'll do is wet my brush and feather it off on the bottom end of it and then I'll put some despair green on my brush and just bring back the top of the fold there so that'll blend it in nicely there um, let's do this side so I don't get too disheartened if you make a mistake or you go over into your green you know, it's, it's easily corrected I would say don't despair because it's, it's despair green I'll stick the paint okay and start highlighting next. I actually thought it'd be better to explain it to you uh, while I'm doing this one. Um, like I said, I've added a bit of green, uh, a bit of black to the green, and if I go in there with it. What I'll do, um, I'll keep the black on on the brush, but I'll I'll dip it in the green, and then I'll go to the side of where I put the black, and because the green mixes with the black on the brush, you get a nice blend then. And then what I'll do is I'll take I'll take the excess off my brush, 
and then go back in the green again and go further across from there so that should leave it nice and dark in the fold and then you've got your original base coat on the top of the fold that's that's the strategy anyway okay for the mask I'm going to do a, <coughs> a couple of different ones um, first one is using Vallejo's uh, steel decided to get some of the metals out of the way before I actually start highlighting the hood so I don't want to get any metal flecks on it so for um, <coughs> for the rest of the mask I'm using a if you know scale 75 paints you'll know the the metal and alchemy um, ones and for this one I've got uh, amethyst alchemy but I'm, I'm pretty sure if you made a, uh, a really thin mix um, to make a metallic purple and I'm just using it like a wash really because I want to get it into the recesses because yeah, it's really thin and it should give a nice uh, subtle purple hue because I, I did a bit of research online and I had a, lo a look at um, Death Eater masks and they're all different colours, you know, they're all metallic in, in nature but they've all got different hues to them so I'm using amethyst for this one and there's another one, there's cobalt, um, it's like a blue so I'm going to use the blue one for this guy. But the same, you can do the same by adding a, a, a tiny bit of blue to your, your metallic paint. Sorry, I knocked the camera there. And the last one has got a little bit of green in it. Uh, I can't remember what this one is. Emerald Alchemy. So we'll see what they dry like and see if they need another coat. But um, yeah, we'll come back on this dry. Okay, the mask is dry. Um, I've decided to go in with another coat and um, if I remember rightly this was the cobalt blue so you want a blue glaze. <clears throat> but this time I'm staying... you can see some raised details on there, you know, the on the top of the mask there's like uh, you know, patterns I'm not I'm not putting any paint on those bits I'll do the eye sockets and the cheeks and I'll stay away from the patterns because I want to pick them out in well probably a different metallic colour so I treat this just like a wash really and you're, you're looking to get into all the recesses for the the jacket or the tunic or whatever he's wearing, um, I'm sticking with the same paint set. It's the Shades of Doom from Scale 75, and that's the Innsmouth blue. It's quite a nice desaturated blue grey. Uh, I'm going to use that for a couple of them actually. I've done that one as well. Um, 
might turn out to be quite a nice blue actually. So um, yeah I'll just leave the, the mask to dry and we'll come back and highlight it. So the mask is drying so I'm going to go back in with a second coat of the what was it Innsmouth blue for the, um, the tunic or the jacket that he's wearing. I like this colour actually, never used it before. Um, while that's drying, I've got my favourite grey. Now that I'm doing these Harry Potters, I discovered a German grey. Um, <laughs> I'm using it for as much as I can, really, because I love it. Uh, I'm just going to do the trousers and the boots in German grey and the he's wearing like long gloves so I'll do that the same colour uh, probably take two coats but Do boots or shoes and the same. Well, I'll tidy that up and uh, just wanted to show you this one. It's the the red from the same set. Uh, Tindalos red or Tindalos red or whatever. I don't know. Um, that's come out quite a nice colour as well, but I'm just going to do the German grey for the boots and the, the gloves as well. And I need to repair the one that's... She came without one. And if you have a look back at the... I'm not sure what episode it was, I do do a, a, like a wand repair and I made a few spares so it's just a case of gluing it on I think. Um, and for the other lady Death Eater, I'm going to use the same German grey again. Um, I forgot to say that I, if I do two drops of paint, I'll put two drops of water in it and a drop of flow improver and if you notice the direction of my strokes I'm, I'm stroking into the, the creases so I was pulling it down that way and hopefully with the flow improver it'll settle into the recesses and it'll look a bit darker in there and it speeds things up a bit I'm off for saving time. Sorry if I'm spinning this around too quickly, it's probably making you feel queasy. I might need to do a bit of flesh on the other one that I did, the red skirt. It's looking like she's wearing some kind of bustier or a corset and so I'm gonna I'll do some flesh up the, the top area there um, oh, I'm starting to get there now it's all looking good so back to the masks of um, I quite like the the little hue that we've got going on but I wanted to dull everything down a wee bit so I've got a well I've made a black glaze basically and this should do two things for us. It'll dull, it'll dull the metallics down, and it'll give us some shade as well. So, um, yeah, that that was uh, that was black with quite a lot of water and a bit of flow improver in it. 
just to help it settle in the recesses. I've done this one already, I'm doing another coat, but I'm going just in the eyes there. Don't worry if it looks like he's a panda, it will dry and it won't look as bad. Same with this one. And the last lady. I've decided against the flesh. Um, I've gone all red. The flesh did, didn't look right. It's more like a vampire than a death eater. Okay, um, pick out the details on the mask when that's dry now. Okay, so I've got some uh, steel and I've added a little bit of grey to it, like a medium grey to it, just to take the shine off a little bit. And I'm just going to start picking out, if I can, the details of the mask. So. Going on the beak, the cheeks. Now, if you can pick out the individual lines on the cheek, it's like lines going down the cheek. If you can pick them out as well. And let's go the chin and the bottom lip. The top bit is going to be uh, like a goldy colour, so but it's going to be like a burnished gold. Um, so yeah, just uh, just pick out those details, and then we'll move on to the gold. Uh, for the goldy bits, um, I've got a Balthazar Gold or GW. Um, I've added a little bit of Agrax to it just to dull it down. And I've switched to a smaller brush now. I'm on a size 0 brush. And I'm going to try. Pick out those swirls up the top. This will take a couple of coats because I've added the agrax to it. It's quite thin now, but I don't want to. You know, don't want to strike in gold colour. Um, just want to keep it quite muted. And um, the other thing I did was to use the. The last colour that we used on the silver parts, I used that for the belt buckle and I put a little bit of black wash in the middle. Um, but yeah, I'll come back after I've done another coat on the on the swirly bits and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so that's two coats of the gold on there. It's not looking too bad. Um, if you wanted to stop there, yeah, that's fine. That looks pretty good. Um, but stick with this and we'll uh, make it look a bit better. Okay, so quickly back to the cloak. Um, I've got remember those three colours we started with at uh, the beginning. Um, Rie grey. I've added a tiny bit of the despair green to it, so I've, I've got like a transition colour. And I'm going to work on the, the folds of the cloak. So I'm just using the side of the brush to go up. And I'm going to start picking out the tops of the cloak. Might be a good idea to have your despair green still on your palette so if you make a mistake you can go back to that and just blend it in quickly. So I'm just picking out the top of each fold. And now I've got the pure Rie green, uh, grey. You know, just on its own, nice and thin. 
I'm just going to pick out again. I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom of this. I'm just going to pick out the stuff at the top. I made a mistake there. I'm going to go back in with the despair green. Let's get that shadow back. It's only a minor thing, but you know, it'll play on my mind if I don't fix it. You'll get to recognise which ones you're going to highlight and which ones you're going to leave. try another coat of that and see where we go so for the gloves I did them really quickly I did the Rie grey with a bit of miskatonic grey just added some of that into it just to lighten it up and I've just picked out the tops of each crease and what I'm going to do I'm going to throw a black wash over it just to dull it down again I did the same thing for the trousers you can see I've just picked out the folds I'm just going to throw a black wash on it and it should even in everything out then. Um, when when I first started I had a, had a picture in mind but they're, uh, they're a lot darker than I uh, envisaged but I do like them quite a bit actually. Um, so I'm just going to pick out the highlights on the jumper now. So I've got the original Innsmouth blue and I've added some of the Miskatonic grey into it and I'm just going to pick out the top of each fold I'm not going to bother up there because of the um, you know the decorations are uh, I'll leave them as they are so I've added just a little bit more grey into it just to lighten things up a bit I'll do the tops of the sleeves now If it needs it, we'll put a wash in, but I don't think it uh, it does actually. I've added a little bit more grey to it. And I'm just going to try and get the, the right on the edge. Might be too much, I think it's too stark, but we'll see how it, see how it dries. Okay, so I think we'll call time on the Death Eaters. Um, there's not much else that's, that's new to show you. Um, <clears throat> I won't bother going through the, the red on that one because that's not finished. It'll take ages anyway, and the light is going here. Um, so, I'll get them based, and we'll, uh, we'll do a wrap-up. Okay, there we are finished. Um, well, apart from the lady in the red dress, that'll take a wee bit more to do. Um, these came together quite quickly, just, uh, well, these throughout the course of one afternoon. So, yeah, not bad going. Um, I hope you find it useful. Um, yeah, just, uh, 
if you get stuck on any of the colours or anything or you want to try and match a colour I'll, uh, I'll try my best to try and help you out as much as I can just let me know, just get in touch with the comments below um, so that's it for this episode and we'll uh, hopefully see you in the next one, cheers <laughs>